Hello everyone and welcome back to Fun Fridays. Today's webinar is going to be all about beef and as usual everything that you learn today are based on our dig-in books that are available to download from our website. So there's several lesson plans. The beef one is actually encapsulated within cattle so you'll find that under the cattle lesson plan. Now as usual there's a few shout outs to give. I just have them here in front of me. So I want to say hello to Miss Brennan's class. I know that you guys have been on quite a lot. I've seen that name. I'd also like to say hello to Karnan National School. Welcome back, guys. So second, third and fourth class from Karnan National School in Limerick. Hi, everyone. And I would also like to say hello to Church Street National School in Rathkeel. Hi, everybody. Now, there's still lots of people joining us. So we'll just wait another minute or so before we get started. So this is number seven. So our quiz challenger that we're going to be learning up or the quiz challenger we're going to be answering today is number seven. So that's very important to note. I would also like to say hello to Faith Leg Six Class. Faith Leg Six Class. Hi, everybody. Oh, lovely. I, I see Queen of Angels is here. Mr. Dermody's class. Mr. Dermody's fifth class and Queen of Angels. Hi, everybody. Excellent. Lots of people joining. So today, the way this is going to work, as usual, I'm going to share my screen with you and we're just going to have a little bit of an introduction to beef and also beef animals. Then we will have our educational video and this week it's actually going to be a, a farm tour by Sophie Bell. So I had also asked you guys to submit some questions for Sophie. So she's also answered some of those questions for us and we'll be seeing that through a video as well. And then, of course, at the very end, we will have our quiz challenger. So the interactive activity this week was the Q&A. So we won't have a craft or anything to do today with the Q&A. We'll fill that um, space for the interactive activity. Super. So I think everyone is happy. Let's see. We'll say hello to one more. Who will I say hello to? Let's have a look. I would like to say hello to Canal Way ETNS in Dublin 8. Hi, everybody. OK, let's get started. Just going to share my screen with you all. Now, here we go. So we're going to be learning all about beef today, and I'm going to start straight off with asking your teachers for some help. <laughs> I would like to know what kind of animal does beef come from? So beef of, beef, of course, is a type of meat. Can you tell me straight off what kind of animal do we get beef from? So you can use the Q&A box to let me know. Excellent. Perfect, so I see the exact right answer that I'm looking for. So lots of people have mentioned cows. This isn't wrong, but in general, we would refer to all beef animals as cattle because there can be various different sources of that beef from different types of cattle. So we have cows, we can also have, get beef from bulls as well. So there's lots of different types. So in general, we're talking about the group of animals that we get beef from, it is from cattle. Super, well done, everybody. Now, I've already briefly gone through our outline, so we're gonna have an introduction to beef and bulls. We will be having a farm tour of Sophie's farm in County Cavan. Have a Q&A with Sophie and then quiz challenger number seven. Super, so I had said that if we are looking at beef, we can uh, group all of these animals together as cattle. So we have the females who can give us two main products. Obviously, we're talking about beef today, but of course, when it comes to mammals, like we learned in our very first webinar series, if it's a mammal and especially cows, they will also give us milk. So I've just put milk up here, just so that we know that from the females, which are called cows, we can also get milk and we can get beef. And then when it comes to our males, 
we only get meat. So it's only the females that produce milk, but they can also give us meat. And then when it comes to the males, they can only give us meat and they cannot give us milk. Can anybody give me, or get some help from your teachers, of course, again. So we have bulls, I've already mentioned them. Is there any other names that we can use for male cattle? Anybody have any other names that they might be familiar with? Any, oh, very good. I've got people answering straight away. Excellent. So bullock is the word that I was looking for. Very good. So we use the word bull to describe a animal that could possibly be a dad, could be a daddy, could have a baby calf. And then we use the word bullock if they're never going to have a baby. So that's kind of the two distinct differences between bulls and bullocks. And you can actually use both of them to produce beef. But of course, we cannot get milk from the males. Excellent. Well done, lots of people knew the word bullock, that's brilliant. Now, there's a few other important things to be aware of when we are talking about where we get our beef from. So the, typically there's lots of breeds of cattle where we will get beef from. Some examples of this would be a Hereford or another example would be a limousine but you can actually get beef from a typical dairy breed and there's different systems for this. But the main difference when you are looking at a beef breed and a dairy breed of cattle is if you look at their form. So let's just get my laser. If we look at their form, when it comes to dairy animals, it all comes from the females and it gets made in their udder here and it gets extracted from their teeth. And if you look at their body shape, on their backs, they can be bonier because they are concentrating all their energy on producing milk. So any kind of dairy animal, they don't actually use their energy to create muscle, they use it to create milk. So you'll notice that with dairy animals, they can look quite bony and that's completely normal. It's just their breed and it's their nature. So if you see an animal like this black and white Holstein Frisian here, and it looks a bit bony on top, that is just because that animal is concentrating on producing milk and not building muscle. But you can, of course, use dairy breeds to produce meat. It's just kind of a different kind of meat and it might not be worth as much money as maybe a, a Hereford breed. So that's our dairy there. And then when we look at beef animals or typical beef animals, you can see this one. If you look at the back of this animal, it's got a lot more muscle. You can't really see their bones sticking out. And when you're making beef, you really want those animals that go, can put on quite a lot of muscle. And this will give you a higher price for your animal and also, in theory, tastier meat as well. Now, another little help from your teachers. Is anybody able to tell me what kind of, when we're talking about cattle, what would we call this type of cattle? One person's got the correct answer already, well done. Brilliant, lots of people flying in with this, excellent. Yes, this is what we would call a bull. And you can typically tell that it's a bull because they're quite a big animal. Usually bulls will have more muscle on them than their female counterparts. But you can also tell from this ring here. So often bulls will actually have this ring in their septum in that part of their nose. And this just is implemented as a safety measure because bulls are such big animals that if you want to move them or if they are getting aggressive, which they can, bulls can typically be aggressive. They can be very, very dangerous. If you have this ring in their nose, it just allows the farmer to have a little bit more control and it protects the farmer in case the bull was to get quite aggressive. Okay, I have another question for you all. This is, a, oh, somebody's already answered this. I was gonna say, what is the breed of this animal? I see some people have already answered, but I will ask that question now to see if anybody can tell me that. So what kind of breed is this animal? So remember a breed, is a word that we use to describe the different types of animals in the one family group. So with dogs, they're all dogs, but one might be a Labrador, one might be a Chihuahua, one might be a Jack Russell. So they're just different names and different breeds for that grouping of animals. So this is a bull and it's in the cattle group, but it has a particular breed. Excellent, so I see lots of people answering Belgian blue. Yes, 
That is the exact answer that I want. So this is a Belgian blue breed of animal. And this animal is typically known for putting on a lot of muscle. So you can see the muscling up here and even around the back at the animal's rump, very muscly. So they actually frequently have a, a genetic mutation which causes them to put on even extra muscle than a typical beef breed. So Belgian blues, blues are known for beef production. Brilliant, everybody knew a lot of answers there. Very good. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is cattle byproducts. So the term cattle, we use that to describe any of the animals, any cows, bulls, bullocks, even the calves, they're all cattle. And if the main thing that we want from a beef animal is beef, that meat, there are other things that we can get besides beef and they're known as byproducts. So if we're aiming to produce beef and we get that as our goal, but there's also other things that we can get from those animals while making beef. So can anybody give me any example of a byproduct? So a byproduct is going to be something that is not your intended purpose. It's something that comes as um, a side enterprise, if that makes sense. It'll probably make sense to the older ones more than the younger ones. So, oh, very good. Answers flying in there. Brilliant. Excellent. Very good. All correct answers. So I see lots of people saying leather. Perfect. This is a perfect example of a byproduct. Bags. Yes, of course, we can make bags from leather. Absolutely. Um, Clockfin National School, you guys said lard, very good. So if you participated in the environment webinar where we made suet balls, we'd actually use lard from beef animals to, to help create those um, bird cakes, which are a really important food source for animals during the winter time. So lard is another byproduct. Hooves to make jellies, super. So there are inside the hooves, and inside the bones of parts of lots of different animals, even pigs, cattle, there's something called gelatine. And that can sometimes be used to make jellies, so jelly sweets. There's also vegetarian versions of that, but gelatine would typically have been used to make jelly, to make that kind of squishy, spongy texture. Super. Some people have said blood. Yeah, that's actually a very good one to note because so you can make pudding, you know, um, black or white pudding. You can actually make that from blood of different animals. Typically, it comes from pigs, but you can make it from cows as well. Excellent. So let's see what I had made note of. Super. So I had leather, which you absolutely got. Somebody had said lard. So remember when we made our bird cakes? Lard, excellent source of saturated fat, which which birds really need in the winter time. And then there's this final one here. So inside the bones here, if you simmer that in hot water, you can create bone broth, which also has, is full of vitamins that you need and also lots of minerals and salts that can actually really help someone if they're, if they're sick or run down or if they want to um, get their, their stomach bacteria, their good bacteria in their stomach to a nice level. But these are all byproducts. So mostly we farm cattle because we want to produce beef or dairy, of course, but there's so many things that you can actually make and use. And when the animal has um, gone to the marsh and then it's at its end of life, it's important that you use all parts of the animal. So we can get leather, we can get birds, uh, suet or lard, and then also we've got our bone broth over here. Well done, everyone. Excellent answers. Now, the last few things that I want to talk about before we move on to our farm tour with Sophie is there's, two, there's different types of systems when it comes to bee farms. So this one here, where we have our animal, our calves and the mummies kind of staying together is usually called a suckler system or a suckler farm. And those calves will usually grow up to then become meat. And sometimes the adults actually stay on the farm to produce more babies. So when they stay and they suckle from their mother, it's called a suckler farm. 
So that's one system. And then this is more like Sophie's system. And we're going to learn a bit more about this in the video, but I just wanted to introduce it to you before we go any further. So this would be a cast beef system. So on Sophie's farm particularly, she actually will buy in calves from the local dairy farm and she will hand rear them. So she'll bottle feed them milk and raise them then to be used for um, meat. So there's a few different systems, but we're going to learn a bit more about Sophie's system now in our educational video. Whoops, wrong way. Now, so just to mention a little bit more about Sophie. So Sophie is a beef farmer from County Cavan. She raises dairy calves for beef production on her farm. And this means that her calves come from a local dairy farm and they are hand reared or bottle fed on the farm by Sophie. Now let's just get rid of my laser pointer there. Sophie runs a calf to beef farm with her family in County Cavan. The calves are bought from a local dairy farm at a young age and stay in Sophie's farm for about two years. When they arrive, the calves are given vaccinations to prevent them from getting sick. They are fed milk replacer twice a day. calves are young, they must drink milk to help them develop a healthy immune system. Look how fast they drink, they must be hungry. As they grow, they must learn to eat calf food and straw to help their stomachs to develop. When the calves are old enough and the ground is dry, they are let out onto the grass. This is a brand new experience for them and they get very excited. At this time, the calves get weaned off milk and begin to eat more grass and roughage. Calves love being outside munching on fresh grass during the summer. In winter, the weather gets colder and wetter. The calves then come inside to make sure that they stay healthy and to protect the grass. When in the sheds, they eat silage. Silage is fermented grass. When the calves reach a certain age, Sophie's farm will send them to the marsh to be sold. At the marsh, another farmer buys the cattle to fatten them up. When they are the right weight, they are sent to the factory to become food. Now, there we go. So that was a little bit of an introduction into Sophie's beef farm. Um, at this point, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who submitted questions. So, of course, Sophie couldn't answer all of them, but she was able to answer quite a few and she's put together a little video where she answers them. So there is a few shout outs in that video. So make sure you pay close attention to see if your question was read out and answered.
So let's take a look at what Sophie has to say about answering your questions. Now, here we go. So here is Sophie. Also, just to say before we start, Sophie actually works with me in AgriAware. So she is our social media and events officer. So if you're ever at events anytime in the future with AgriAware, you probably will meet Sophie. This question is from Patrick. One second, let me hide those panels so you can see. From the Holy Family National School. Um, are you from a farming background? Yes, I am from a farming background. Um, I grew up on a small family farm in Cavan. Um, we did not have many animals a few years ago, but uh, we've quite a good few calves now. Did I? Did you always want to be a farmer? Um, I always loved animals when I was growing up, but I think when I went to secondary school, my interest in animals started to grow a lot more because I was surrounded by lots of like-minded people. Um, this question is from the Holy Family National School in Shanagari. Um, from Oliver, do you name the calves? Some of them have names. Um, we don't name them all, but we do have our favourites. This question is from Alfie in Skullbreja, Eden Dairy. What breed of calves do you rear? We mainly rear Belgian Blues and Limousines. This question is from Amy. How long have you been rearing calves for? Um, I bought some calves in secondary school when I was in fifth year and that was about six years ago so I've been rearing calves since then. This question is from Josh in Skullbreja Eden Dairy. Um, how many calves do you rear each year? We have about 35 calves each year to hand rear. This question is from Ryan in St. Mary's, Ines, County Donegal. What is the most important job to ensure you get the best quality beef? Very good question. Um, you have to ensure that the animals are happy and healthy and well fed. Um, that's the main thing. And secondly, um, in Ireland, we feed a grass-fed diet because there is plenty of grass and that is how we get really good quality beef through our grass. This question is for Sean in Skullbridge Primary School, Eden Dairy. How long does it take to feed or make milk for 10 calves? Um, altogether, I think it would take about half an hour. Queen of Angels, fifth class, asked, what is the best breed of cow for beef in Ireland? Um, I think it is usually said that the Hereford or the Angus is usually the most suitable breed for beef production in Ireland. Now, so that was... This question Oh, is excuse me. Let's stop sharing that now. Now, oh, there we go. So that was Sophie answering a few of our questions. So I'm so sorry that we didn't get to answer them all. But of course, we only have a short little half an hour. So we wouldn't have been able to answer all the questions. But they were all absolutely brilliant questions. And hopefully throughout the webinar, I was able to answer some of your questions along the way. Um, so the only thing that we have to let, have left to do is our quiz challenge your question number seven. So I am going to ask this question now. And as usual, I'll say it once and then I will repeat it again at the end. So this is quiz challenger number seven. And remember, you use these answers to enter the competition on the 10th of December. So your teacher can enter for your whole class where you can submit all 10 answers to all 10 quiz challenger questions. So number seven, if everybody is ready. Name one breed of beef cattle. Now, so I'm going to say it again. 
Name one breed of beef cattle. So this can be one that you learned about today or one that you might have on your farm at home or maybe your grandparents have one on a farm at home. So any breed at all, name one breed of beef cattle. That is your quiz challenger number seven. Super, so that is everything that we have time for today, but I will see you all at 11 o'clock next week where we're gonna learn all about farm safety. So have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.